have some time to talk to an old grandmother. I've got another story for you, but I'd like to tell it to all of your friends at once. An old lady like me has to save her voice, you know. Oh, you still want to talk with me? How incredibly sweet of you. Say, you'll never guess who I saw today. Captain Scarlet! She was robbing my retirement home with a few other brigands, and I recognized her from her wanted poster, and I said, Oh, hey, you fought the Vault Hunter, didn't you? And she bowed all elegantly and said something like, Indeed, I did, madam, and said that you were really good at fighting and that you beat her fair and square. She didn't seem to harbor much of a grudge about it. Nice girl. You should think about meeting up with her again if you're not shacked up with anybody, you know? I mean, of course, you probably are. Gorgeous hunk of a vault hunter like you. I bet you're beating away suitors left and right. Look, you're blushing. Oh, I could just eat you up. <laughs> Mr. Torg was so scared of trying to get a date for such a long time. He used to go to parties in high school and just stand in the back without talking to anybody. I am an introvert! I tried to tell him, I said, don't worry about chasing love. If you chase your dreams, then love will follow. See, that's the thing people don't get. You watch Echo films and they're just awful. They teach you that the only way to be with someone is just to pursue them over and over until they decide they like you. In reality, you know when you like someone almost immediately. You can't really convince somebody to fall in love with you. You just look like a stalker. But if you do things that you're interested in, like making guns that explode or killing mercenaries, then people will see that confidence and skill you have and they'll be attracted to it. But there's always a fine line between that kind of confidence and narcissism, you know? There's nothing worse than somebody who wants to be famous. I remember when Mr. Torg first sold his weapons tech to that board of directors, he was pretty egocentric for a while taking pictures of himself and posting them to the Echo Net all the time, trying to hobnob with every celebrity that used his weapons. He came back home one day with a supermodel under each arm, and I said, Mr. Torg, what are you doing? You've lost sight of who you are. It's been weeks since you actually created a new gun, I said. And it was true. He'd been more obsessed with being well known for doing something great than with actually doing something great. It was a dark point in my life. Thankfully, High Five listened to me and got to work on what would eventually become the Kerblaster. You a fan of the Kerblaster? That was always my favorite. That and the Flacker, which I know a lot of people hate. But there's more to combat than just brute efficiency in this old lady's eyes. Style counts for something. And there's nothing quite like filling the air with tiny little explosions. It's like a fireworks show, except the deaths aren't as sad and unexpected. Actually, that reminds me, now that you're here, I wanted to throw some ideas at you for feedback. I'm a playwright in my spare time, and I'm trying to write a story about an up-and-coming tournament fighter who tries to find love in a gladiatorial arena. And I figure you've got a lot of experience, so your feedback could really be valuable. So the play is called Broken Hearts and Broken Necks. Scene 1. Fade in on an arena, just after a battle. Body parts litter the stage. A lone warrior stands in the middle of the stage, a spotlight illuminating her blood-stained armor. She stands, holding her sword triumphantly aloft. Valkyrie. Is there no warrior who can challenge me? Must I be destined to spend my life as the strongest, the bravest, the most invincible warrior this galaxy has seen? For I am Valkyrie! Scourge of the Gladiatorial Games! Eggs went wildly as she shakes her head in despair. From stage left enter Nodal, a janitor with a heavy heart and an even heavier conscience. He begins sweeping the body parts into a bin, which is colored green, and remember that because that's a symbolic color that will come back, until melancholy overtakes him. He drops his push broom to the floor and falls to his knees before delivering a heart-wrenching soliloquy. No. The blood cannot be washed away. Not before and not now. Even as I attempt to escape the past, which haunts me still. Must I live forever as a fraud, sweeping up the trash of others to hide my shame and avoid my pursuers? Must I forever remain on the periphery of joyful combat? 
ever watchful but never participating. Then, with the clatter of honor, Valkyrie re-enters from stage right. Valkyrie. Good morrow, lowly janitor. I heard a noise and thought it worth investigating. Murdoch. Oh, great Valkyrie, was nothing but the wails of those souls you released from their bodies tonight. Souls that wail in agony as they fly upward to Valhalla. Valkyrie. Fools! What have they to wail about? Their agonies are over, ended at the point of my sword. Mine, however, have only yet begun. For it is lonely at the top, and an unchallenged life is a boring one. No doubt. If only I were able to tell her my true identity, I would give her a fight she would not soon forget. Back to Valkyrie. Yes, ma'am, boredom is the true tragedy. May you one day find challenge in combat. Stupid, Nodon picks up a giant two-armed bastard sword with almost no end. Valkyrie, as I did. What is this? Excellent, Nodon. Stage left. What strength this janitor possessed? Who is he to pick up a bastard sword with two fingers? What hidden power does he hold? What secrets does he keep? I will endeavor to uncover his past in the hopes that our swords may cross in battle! Excellent. Of scene one. <clears throat> scene two. The interior of the governor's house. The table is set with merely teas and biscuits and milk. Oh, I'm so sorry. I didn't even ask you for the feedback on the first scene. Did you like it? Oh, wonderful. I'll continue then. Scene two. The governess enters from stage left. Governess. I refuse to respond to these absurd accusations. Her husband looks at her quizzically. Governor. And what accusations may those be? Governess. Actually, you know what? I don't think I'm ready to get feedback on the play yet. But w what about you? What are you up to? Tell Grandma Flexington all about it. I bet you've had some amazing adventures. Mr. Torg told me about the time you all played bunkers and badasses together. He said it was one of the most fun and welcoming experiences of his life. Grandpa! You're embarrassing me! Sorry, sweetie, but really, you and the Vault Hunters are his first real pals. It wasn't easy for Mr. Torg to make friends at school when he had facial hair at age eight, pecs at eight and a half, and dead parents by age nine. People found him intimidating, but I told him that he should be thankful for the fact that he looks different. Anyone who wouldn't be friends with you based on appearance wouldn't be a very good friend anyway. But he really does like hanging out with all of you. Most people these days want Torg to pose for pictures or blow something up by flexing at it. It's not often he gets to sit down and play games with people. Oh, speaking of games, did you play Going Back to the House yet? It's a new echo simulation about exploring a log cabin you lived in when you were a kid. There's no violence or anything. You just walk around looking at cereal boxes and remembering people you made out with. <laughs> I really like where echo sims have gone in the past few years, don't you? There seem to be a lot more of them with interesting things to do beyond shooting people. And the writing has gotten so tight in size. For instance, did you ever play the Samurai's Marker? The whole game's story was delivered through haiku. Did Zero write it or something? <laughs> no, I'm just joking. I know you're too busy for that. But oh yeah, I was playing at the end of the pointed gun last night on my Echo Sim player. And wow, is that funny. It's about a guy who punches people and smacks himself in the face with doors. <laughs> Easily one of the best punch-related comedy sims ever. But oh, I'm really looking forward to this game called Robot Hunter Assault Squadron, which is this big randomized survival game about throwing bottles at trees and accidentally scaring birds. In the demo version, I scared a bird so hard it died. 10 out of 10 in my book. But what kind of things do you do for fun? You play any sports? You look like you might be into some of the more extreme huh. stuff, like huh. wine or huh. playing or psycho head volleyball. I knew an athlete a lot like you when I was younger. Her name was Nijo, and she was a special. Oh, that's disgusting! That's the only time we had that oh. to run, And then see how far you could make their viscera fly across a big field. You got points based on distance and the size of the viscera. 
She won the final round of the Giblet Toss Championship by getting a left eyeball to cross the 300 meter mark. They said she was juicing with her idiom, but I think they were just angry that she dethroned the reigning champ, misogynistic Jeff. They all really liked him for some reason. Hey, what's your favorite food? My burgers, personally. People look at you like you're a pleb or something when you say you like burgers, but just think of all the things you can do with them. You can change out the patty, play around with the toppings, change what sides you have. You ever have a burger with veggie chips? Gosh, I all but forgot about fries for about a year after I discovered the veggie chip combo. <laughs> and I'm not a vegetarian or anything, but those veggie patties they make on the more upper class worlds are crazy good. Better than real meat if you cook it right. Mr. Torg tried to be vegetarian once after he saw a fluff bear get run over by a truck. How long did you last again? Twelve seconds! Barely even finished the word vegetarian before he lunged at a skag chew I was holding in my left hand. Nearly lost a finger. Granted, he's always been partial to skag chews or skag bacon. Don't know why, since I always felt like skags tasted like old tires and vomit. But to each his own. Taste is a funny thing. People say your taste buds get more refined as time goes on, but they actually get worse and worse. So when Mr. Torg used to refuse vegetables as a kid, it's because he was actually tasting how awful they were. When we old folks eat vegetables, we're only okay with it because we can't taste all the gross vitamins and stuff. Granted, vitamins are what have kept me going for as long as I've been going. You get enough B12 in your system and you can head but a freight train without so much as a bruise. That reminds me, I need to get my pills ready for the rest of the week. I have one of those little metal containers split into different sections for each day. It's really helpful. And the sides are sharp enough that I can use it to ward off burglars if I need to. What else do I have to do this week? Probably head to the bazaar, pick up some frozen spider and flanks. Gotta bring my coat though, cause it gets kind of chilly in the freezer section. What else do I need? Uh, oh, I need Schwartzman's candy drops. Gosh, those are delicious. They're so smooth and sweet. Just thinking about them. I could go for one right now, couldn't you? Do you think you could go find me one?
by the fireplace telling Mr. Torg stories of days gone by. There's just nothing like a good roaring fireplace, is there? Something healing and safe. Maybe that's why our family likes explosions so much. They're basically just big fireplaces. Every explosion feels just like coming home. Oh, maybe that'd be a good slogan for the Torg Corporation. Don't you think, High Five? Don't be silly, it's a wonderful slogan and you know it. I used to come up with slogans for a living when I was in my teens. I came up with the jingle for Professor Gunsight's Can't Miss Scopes. How'd it go again? Oh, oh yeah! If you try to shoot but you miss a lot, then give Professor Gunsight Scopes a shot. Huh. And then they played a gunshot sound effect and someone going, ah. It was cute. But gosh, I've been talking for a while now, haven't I? Thanks for bringing your friends to listen to an old woman ramble for a while. I can't tell you how great it is to have somebody new to talk to, especially a vault hunter. Oh, and one more thing. No, actually, that can probably wait. Just something about vaults and the end of the universe. <laughs> anyway, here. I always spoil my friends, just like I spoiled my grandson. Impressive. Huh. <clears throat> Enjoy. Oh. Huh. <clears throat> <clears throat> If you've got gold, you I've need got healing. treasures. Badly. <laughs> Good luck on your Magic's quest. Magic's no match whatever. for a well-aimed bullet. Farewell. I 
am but a humble merchant, and these are my wares. I shall see you soon. Magic sucks. Go machinery. Go kill some wizards for me. 